but hi you guys and welcome to my channel i'm back with a new reaction video before we get into this one though i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's becoming a member of my channel supporting me a little bit extra and donating on paypal i see you and i really appreciate you it means a lot so thank you guys for that and one of you have requested me to check out this video called the power that petrified everyone this is julian jackson and the thumbnail i'm not sure i'm familiar with him so this one's gonna be interesting i'm not gonna ramble let's get straight into this video first thing i see is mike let's see what they're talking about Aside from Mike Tyson, do you think maybe Jackson has the most devastating punch in boxing today? Well, I'm very impressed. He continues to improve more and more, and he's a two-time champion and extremely confident. Welcome back to Greatest Hits here on BLTV Extra. On this series, we look back and break down a legendary boxing career from the past, bringing casual viewers up to speed while simultaneously offering a nostalgia piece for hardcore fans of the sport. Okay, this is on today's video, we turn the clock back to the early 90s and recap, according to many credible journalists and historians, the single greatest one-punch KO artist in the sports history. A man that entered the ring with ice in his veins and pure, unadulterated power in his fist. Is that Don King? One, Julian the Hawk Jackson. Why is he real? Whenever I enter the ring, I, I feel that I'm not going to go the distance. Regardless of what happened, I just feel that the fight will not go the distance. Regular viewers around here know that we take a lot of care in how we preserve and present fights on this series. I and for this video in particular, it. we've worked extra hard on upscaling and restoring heavily compressed material, which is unfortunately the case for much mm -hmm. of Jackson's career. It's not perfect, but it's yes. the highest quality footage that has ever been presented since the original broadcast. If you enjoy the content around here, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Here now, BLTV presents Julian Jackson. Shout out to the guy who made the video. I will have the link in the description to the original one. Jackson's greatest hits. I just like to say to Mike Tyson, man, you know, I could do it too, you know. <laughs> After escaping gang life in his hometown of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, Julian became a devout Christian and channeled his energy into becoming a boxer. Due to most of his early career being on non-televised shows, Jackson's first 30 or so fights remained a mere statistic outside of a few scarce pieces of media. When he wasn't moonwalking over guys that he just knocked out, Jackson's focus on being a more rounded boxer was apparent. That focus quickly shifted once he suffered his first defeat to Mike McCallum in 1986. A controversial second round stoppage made Julian swear he, he would never allow himself to suffer another loss unless the man defeating him had felt and overcome his truly destructive one punch power. Essentially dropping the box and move gimmick to devote himself as a purebred power puncher. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, the hardest punch in junior middleweight today. November 21st, 1987. With a record of 31 wins, 29 knockouts, and one loss, Jackson took on the 41 and 1 in Chul Beck in what was Beck's second fight outside of his home nation of South Korea. It was a sloppier version of Jackson compared to what the fans were used to, yet his intent to score a knockout in the opening minutes was apparent, with his frantic approach only adding to the excitement. Oh, If he comes out storming, then we're going to have stormy weather. If he comes out sinking, then I'm going to have to go through the old chessboard. Jackson made his first title defense against the former IBF champ and evidently cocksure Moses Buster Drayton. Drayton was an aging fighter, but more than capable of drowning untried challengers with his vast experience. Drayton fights uh, by his own book, I guess you call it. He's liable to do anything in there. Side of it. Direction is coming at your you see it too. Inside by the champion Jackson. Under a minute to go. Like a chip. Heavy punch in the body by Jackson. Oh champion. my god, like a punching bag. Punishment. Great is taking him. And great is How is he gonna respond? Oh, he's not gonna respond. 
that was so hard. And that became Jack. No, you guys saw he was like, oh, no way. Hold on, I need to play this. No, look at this. Look at his hand. Three. And that became Jackson's trademark move, pointing to the exact spot his opponents would drop after landing his finishing blow. Bring all of them, get in line because Julian Jackson is ready, and I'm ready to to, to put St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, St. Croix, St. John on the map. I got goosebumps in my face. Oh my god. No break. You try too hard. You step in with that jab and you'll get everything done that you want to do, right or wrong. As he often did, Jackson came out unleashing a vigorous assault to the body, softening and catching to Jesus off guard when he eventually switched things up top. <laughs> Whenever I hit my opponent and I knew that I caught him right, I would just walk away because I feel a shock all the way up to my elbow. And whenever I feel that shock, I know it's over. Oh. Julian Jackson, Terry Norris is coming to get you. Jackson stepped up to big time boxing on July 30th, 1989, defending his world title against the future Hall of Fame speed demon, Terrible Junior Terry Norris. Norway title, Julian Jackson. He had talked about doing some work to the body early, but. <laughs> It's been upstairs so far. Terry Norris, rather exciting combination. Brilliant hand speed, Norris. Good chopping right hand, and Terry Norris right here. Is he gonna be tired and quick if you come in like that immediately? I think Julian Jackson's having a lot of trouble with the speed. Norris came out and took complete control of the action, forcing Jackson on the back foot by landing a plethora of his signature combinations. A disjointed Jackson stuck to his game plan, confident in his ability to end the fight once the opportunity presented. Overhead chopping right and. Again, the incredible Better. knockout ratio of Jackson. Oh! Quality over quantity. He lost his concentration for one oh time. Coming right here from the champion. And I try to just keep a positive mood about myself and really go out there and try my best. Win, lose, or draw, I'm always a winner. Right. We had a fight a little bit uh, earlier this afternoon that I think that you'd like to see just how it ended. A rare three minutes of action that wasn't aired on live television came to light in recent years as Jackson took on Wayne Powell to prepare himself for a move to the full 160 pound middleweight limit. And I'm just thankful this one at least made its way onto the internet. A murderous finish. Jackson's so dangerous with that right hand. Oh, it's like the body. It was one of the hardest punches I've ever seen thrown by a middleweight. Jackson's mission to become a two-weight world champion saw him venture to sunny Spain to take on Britain's own Harold Bomber Graham. Oh man, it's it's gonna be action from the, the round one, you know, and um, how Graham will definitely be on the bike, I know that. Bomber wasn't the best nickname to sum up the Brit's traits. He was a proud product of the Ingle Gym in Sheffield and widely regarded as one of the finest pure boxers Britain has ever produced. Mm. A defensive wizard that could switch it out of the southpaw stance. Yes. This is 12 for the opening round. Style of uh, Graham and the fancy fence. Almost impossible to, to double up on it. The art of this game is to hit without being hit, and he's good at that, man. To put it bluntly, Jackson was getting schooled. Graham was more aggressive yeah, than so. expected, but remained defensively so. sound while letting his shots go on the inside. Oh! He's seriously wrong with his eyesight, but there was with that punch. Mile away there, Jackson. Jackson had no chance to win this fight on points. He needed to time something special to he's stop his man in his He's a sharp attack for this one. A one hit wonder. Graham needed to be perfect for 36 minutes. But he took those hits and responded like this. Jackson required only one second. The 1990 knockout of the year.
Because I would think most people around ringside here would have you three rounds down when you landed that vital punch. Oh, definitely. I knew I was behind. You know, I knew, but I kept on him. I kept the pressure on him. I'm coming home with the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. After defeating Robbie Sims, Michael Olajide, and the formidable Gerald McClellan, Dennis Milton, due to his crafty boxing style, was seen as a live underdog given Jackson's previous trouble with slick go, boxers. If you're going to face a Julian Jackson, who is very good. Good right hand by Jackson. Jackson yeah, wanted to air it out friend. here in the very first that round. Here. Jesus. That and That's there it. goes Milton. Julian Jackson retains his WBC middleweight championship, knocking out Dennis Milton. They call me the hawk because there's a lot of chicken running from the hawk. <laughs> and I want the, the world to know that Julian Jackson is making his mark in the boxing you. today. Jackson was all business when he met his former chief sparring partner, Ron Collins, in the spring of 1992. Judges are from Mexico City, and we are set to go. Round one, scheduled for 12. Champion is set. The man can punch. He just got hit. Collins just got hurt with a good right hand. Chris left hook. Oh. And there's a right by Jackson. Now he comes back with rights and a right stagger. Oh, his balance is Having out. felt Jackson's power many times over the years, Collins was reluctant to go down. I Instead, he started oh taunting his old friend in an attempt to break him down mentally. You that oh. Oh. Collins just saying, come on. A courageous Ron Collins. Come on. Now you're going to be around to hear the points if you keep taking those right hands. And he continues to jaw away at the champion. And Collins just talks to Jackson. The lefty. And the lefty. That should be it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Julian yeah. Jackson with a big knockout. One of the things that seemed to confuse you was he kept talking to you all during one of those rounds. What was he saying? Well, he was trying to get me to uh, punch myself out. And I realized that, so I, I held back, you know, and I let him uh, make the mistake. John King there in the background. He was After his loss to Mike McCallum in 1986, Jackson produced a clean 17 straight like victories, that. with 16 of those coming by knockout. Yet, due to poor management and promotion, he never became a star in his own right, often fighting on Mike Tyson and Julio Cesar Chavez's undercards. And, as the years passed, fans started noticing a decline in the Hawks' skills. The power remained as devastating as ever, but his ability to set up shots, footwork, and overall stamina became a negative focal point, which was worrying considering his next challenge was arguably the most problematic of his entire career dangerous number one hit man in America. Dubbed the most dangerous man in America, the G-Man, Gerald McClellan, was the hottest prospect in world boxing, and according to the Kronks, Emmanuel Stewart, the most talented fighter he'd ever trained. The G-Man was on his way up, the Hawk was on his way down, yet in all the years before and after, fight fans have never been blessed to witness a power puncher showdown of this magnitude, certainly at the middleweight. Hawk, the familiar words of referee credit. Mills Lane. But Julian Jackson starts in a hurry, as you can see. There's nice, good. There it is, a big right hand. Something we spoke about earlier, using that jab. Bam, the right hand over the top. Yeah. McCollum can bang, as we said. Yeah, you got to look for this guy early. Here he is early. And Jackson is rocked in the opening minute of the fight. McClellan started fast, showing no fear, unfazed by Jackson's offensive skills. Jackson responded well, landing some hard counters of his own. Two-time world champion. Oh, look out! After the first few minutes, it was clear this wasn't going the distance. I mean, this is kind of an even fight right now, folks. Reflex, and that takes your legs out from under you. Oh, nice shot by Junior. Down five? No chance of South Carolina there. Julian and Winter right here. Down oh goes Jackson. My God. A left hook by Joe McClellan almost sent him through the ropes. Ay, ay, ay. He's not going to make this, Bobby. He's not going to yeah. make this. Oh. Julian Jackson does it's it. Over, it's over. It's over. Mills Lane has stopped the fight. A testament to his character, Jackson remained gracious in defeat. Aww, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. A quote that epitomizes the closing mm. chapter of Julian Jackson's career. Hey, 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 hey,
from me. God bless you. Oh, our respect is so nice. Jackson oh, lost nice. to McClellan in a scheduled rematch in 1994 before recapturing his WBC title against Augustino Cardamone the following year. Afterward, the Virgin Islander traded knockout victories with various middleweight contenders, staying true to his killer be killed style until the very end in 1998. I think that I give to boxing the greatest fights uh, the people wanted to see Julian Jackson, and I've given them 100%. I've given them all that I have. Yeah, I've nice given to boxing uh, 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 110%, Good. let me say that. And um, I don't think that I've received, you know, uh, uh, my due recollection, what I, I think I deserve from the promoters, especially the fans who were there. There was no doubt about it, uh, and um, I appreciate the fans and all that, you know, came out and supported me. It saddens me that Jackson never got his due credit being the dominant, exciting, and gracious champion he was. Editing back these fights and seeing limited people in the crowd was a visual indication that his promotional yeah, team, that being done. Don King, failed him dramatically in a period where boxers with a tool similar to Jackson had the potential Dirty to earn seven, eight, Don or nine-figure paydays. Of course, Don King wasn't the only problem. Being non-American didn't help, and while Mike Tyson and other top heavyweights attracted all the casuals' eyes, Jackson, among many other talented lower-weight fighters, had to go above and beyond just to feature on their undercards. You know, I'd just like to say to Mike Tyson, man, you know, I could do it too, you know? <laughs> In spite of that, the post-retirement years have favored Jackson, particularly in the digital age we live in today. Fans and journalists make videos and write articles year-round knowing that a potential of millions will tune in and be captured by the almost supernatural stopping power that Jackson possessed. I've made boxing videos for years, covered thousands of fights and fighters, and for from my personal perspective, he is unquestionably one of the greatest KO artists in boxing history, at least from the guys I've covered. I must say this, though, that um, a lot of people ask me this question that uh, did I miss boxing or do I miss boxing, uh, you know, uh, do I get the jitters and, you know, getting back into the ring? And I told them no, because uh, indirectly, I'm, I'm in the ring still, I'm, I'm coaching, you know, and uh, it feels as if I'm still in, you know, um, the game. And um, I think that really helped me a whole lot. And uh, boxing could be a, a really, you know, tough sport outside of the ring as well as inside of the ring. And um, I've learned to respect it, and um, I'm trying to teach my athletes and teach my sons to respect the sport, and I believe the sport will respect them. them, them, them. It's been a pleasure watching, editing, and upscaling. And I... Uh, he, he have a great character, you could tell. It's a very nice, and I mean, he was talented as well. It was just great combination. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, I'll see you guys hopefully in the next video. Bye. <laughs>